introduction today, Jo. As ever, uh, she asked, I said yes. I don't know if I wanted to, but I always say yes because I don't not. Um, uh, I'm thankful for Hannah for joining me and she's going to come in uh, a little bit later on in the talk uh, to help us with some echo images. So um, we're going to talk a bit about the spectrum of disease. We're going to talk about coarctation through hypoplastic aortic arches through to interrupted aortic arches. Obviously, they are common in 22Q deletion and 50% of those patients with interrupted aortic arches will have 22Q deletion. So we always need to think about it. I'll talk a little bit about the uh, presentation of arch obstruction. And then we'll spend most of the time talking about investigation and management. And we've got some, uh, we've got three echo cases that we're going to talk to you about. Um, I'd like to make them interactive if, if at all possible, which is why I wanted to be able to see the chat. Um, but um, uh, possibly maybe even calling out might be the right thing to do, but hopefully you can answer some questions for us. So, um, what is the presentation of arch obstruction? What, how might you present with arch obstruction? Silence. I'm looking for the chat. Nobody's answering yet. Somebody, somebody might I'll, I'll something. I'll start saying people's names. I've seen Bex on there. I've seen Sinitra <laughs> on there. I've seen... Collapse. Um, collapse. We've got collapse. We've collapse, got pale. Absolutely. Pallor. Yeah, maybe. Not looking well, yeah. Neonatal shock. Uh, collapse again. Shortness of breath and weak pulses. Weak pulses. Yeah. Two more. Come on, Sam, you can answer. Uh, well, I'm only answering on behalf. So if anything gets I get wrong, it's definitely not me. Uh, no okay. femorals we've got here. Yeah, that's good. Lactate, I presume high. Mm hmm. Highly lactate. Yep, yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Two I'm, two I'm looking for now, come on. All right, I'm going to give it to you. So they might have an antenatal diagnosis. So yes, we, might, we, might we have, be, yes. Did you have that? OK, so we might already have clues to the diagnosis, uh, but we must remember that antenatal diagnoses are fantastic, but they might be wrong. Um, and of course, Physiology is different before you're born until after you're born. So uh, the diagnosis might be different or the baby might, in fact, be normal, which is probably more common in um, suspected arch obstruction than in other antenatal diagnoses. Um, differential saturations. Just a little reminder of why we do it and, and, and what they mean. We measure the saturations in the right arm because the right subclavian artery normally comes off before the coarctation. So that should be pink blood because the blood's coming directly from the left ventricle into the aorta and into the right subclavian. And of course, in arch obstruction, we've got an obligate right to left flow down the duct so that you're getting blood from your pulmonary artery into your aorta to bypass the obstruction. So you're getting the blue blood from the uh, pulmonary artery mixed with the pink blood in the aorta. So your saturations are going to be lower uh, postductally, so usually in the lower limbs. Um, we need to remember the differential diagnosis here. So um, left heart obstruction is obviously up there, uh, but it could be PPHN or sepsis or all the other little neonatal things that it, it, we found that it's flagged up over the time. Um, the important thing is that when we do see differential saturations that we uh, are alert for arch obstruction so we need to be monitoring the femoral pulses we need to be looking for a change in the differential saturations and the postductal saturations normalizing which would imply that the duct is closing there's no longer that right to left shunt so if your postductal saturations become normal that's a worry for us and in that situation, we'll be checking that the pulses, whether they're still present or not, if they're not measuring the lactate to see whether that has increased, as someone's already measured, mentioned, we might even need to do an arterial lactate um, just to double check. It's not because they've just got cold feet. But essentially, the differential saturations there are to um, 
gives, give us an idea about whether this duct is closing and whether we're going to get obstruction because the next thing we're going to get is poor femoral pulses and the final thing we're going to get is collapse. I've put is the duct good or bad? Well, it is good, isn't it? Because it's life saving, but it does make life difficult for the cardiologist uh, and it can mask diagnoses. And we'll talk a little bit about that going forward. Obviously, if we collapse, we can't go through many network meetings without talking about dinoprostone and the guidelines. But it's just to remember that there are three different doses that we'd start. So we've got an antenatal diagnosis that pops up in your hospital and you do your first scan and you're pretty sure it's exactly what was said on the tin. You've got clear signs that there's arch obstruction. Then you can start on low dose dinoprostone at 10 nanograms per kilo per minute. If you've got an absent femoral pulse baby with normal um, gases, then you could start on 25 nanograms per kilo of, of prostin. Uh, but of course, if they're unwell, there's no messing around. The thing that's going to save this baby's life is starting them on 100 nanograms of prostin, getting that duct open whilst you're resuscitating uh, in the background with the usual ABC, etc. So what things might make us suspicious when we first put the echo probe on that there might be a problem with an arch obstruction? So this is where you can call out or pop something in the chat box and Sam can tell me. I'm poised and waiting. Some of the answers last time came after you put the slide up, so I'm not sure oh. if they count, but I'm sure they were, I'm sure they were tight before. I would give them sure the benefit were. of the doubt. So any answers for that? So things that might make us suspicious that we see on echo. Right ventricular might... hypertrophy or right ventricular dilatation. Not right ventricular sample, dilatation, but... I would say, is a, a, my number one. Of course, you see that in PPHN, don't you? So that's a bit You tricky. do, exactly. It's really important. So this is when to be suspicious. It's not telling you that there is a problem. It's just you've got to be careful. Other left-sided le left lesions, Dr. Sampath is on fire. Dr. Sampath, you're bang on. That's exactly what I've got down. Anything such else? As VSD, such as VSD. VSD as well, absolutely. Dr. Dalton, acceleration in the descending aorta. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm thinking about things that are going to make you look to the arch. Uh, so things that are not in the aorta at the moment. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, Dr. Newbigin quickly corrects herself. So there's right to left flow through the duct. Uh, yeah. Retrograde, retrograde flow in the aorta. Dr. Uh, yeah. I think you're, you you're, you're getting the pictures. You, you're getting the, the thing here. Abnorm so, yeah. ab abnormal aortic valve as well. Yeah, absolutely. So that. associated lesions, you know, I suppose it's the difference between is, is it right heart dilatation? Is it a small left ventricle? But either way, you're going to be worried. Bicuspid aortic valves with any valve pathology there. VSDs, particularly a posteriorly malaligned VSD and interruption, uh, but also things like, you know, I always worry about coarctation in when I go and scan a diaphragmatic hernia and obviously syndromes, uh, if you've got a diagnosis of a syndrome. Um, so we might not be thinking of, of a brand new, button, but, you know, if they're a little bit bigger and they get a genetic diagnosis, your 22 Qs and your turners are definitely going to want to be uh, imaged to see if they have arch problems. So here we go. Nice picture of what I think looks like a lovely dilated right heart here. Um, but what's your differential diagnosis of a dilated right heart? PPHM? Yeah. Dr. Sampath again. She's holding the holding up. TAPVD? Absolutely. Um, cardiomyopathy? And Potentially. ASD. Oh, the paediatrician speaks. Oh, well, we're talking about a brand newborn. I mean, yes, you would in a, an older child. So that's not on my list, but I can see why you said it. Right, out, right outflow obstruction. No, normally left outflow obstruction. So your arch obstruction, but potentially critical aortic stenosis. And there's it one more that we always need to... What's that? Vein of Galen. I think yes! that says. I think that's vein of Galen. I think you've got all Dr. of those. Dr. So Sampath gets, a, gets a, gets a sticker. 
guess who's been through our department? Arch obstruction, TAPVD, PPHN, peripheral AVM. So you need to be thinking about all of these when you have right heart dilatation on your echo. So I'm going to hand over to Hannah um, and uh, we'll try and bully you into answering some questions for her as well. So type quickly if you can. Um, thanks, Fiona. So feel free to chip in um, with anything that I might miss. Um, so three case studies, like Fiona said. So this is the first case study. So a lot of it is basically me asking you questions about what you think. So first of all, um, you've attended to this patient and this is your first image. So what do you think of the arch straight off? Do you think it's OK? Do you think there's anything wrong with it? What do you think just from that image? Slender. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, what about colour flow mapping? Turbulent. Yeah, completely agree as well. So um, what sort of things would you um, do now? Doppler, yes. Yeah. So what I'd probably do is I'd definitely doppler it, um, but I just wanted to show you on the next slide um, measurements, exactly that, exactly that. So this is where I've measured, so transverse arch and isthmus level. And what do you think about these measurements? How big how big's the baby, Hannah? Oh, sorry, the baby is 2.65 kilograms. I'm always trying to get Fiona interested in arches that measure this size, but she keeps reminding me they're preterm babies I'm looking at. <laughs> Apologies, it is actually, um, I thought I'd put the weight on. Um, but Sorry, it's two, it probably two, did. 2.65 kilograms. Dots and your big is already doing the Z scores, so she'll be well ahead. Oh, well, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> That's what we wanted you to basically think. So Z scores, I think, are a key in when you're measuring arches. Although it looks slender, I like a, a figure to back up what you're saying as well. Um, so as you can see, Z scores small, um, both the transverse arch and at the level of the isthmus. Um, so completely agree with what you said earlier. So Doppler the arch. Um, what sort of do you think this Doppler is showing? Is there anything significant? Does this Doppler help with your diagnosis? It's a bit fast. Yeah, so it, it doesn't look too significant. There's not really a, a diastolic tail or it's not too high velocity. Um, what about if I told you the patient still has their duct? Would this change? What would you do now? So how would you manage this patient? So you know they've got a slender arch. It's measuring small. Um, Dopplers aren't too high. There's no sort of diastolic decay, but they've still got a duct. So what sort of what would you do now with the patient? Tell them it's not the heart. No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Fiona might be able to help on this one as well. So they do sort of monitor to see if the duct closes. Um, but if your duct is still persistent and it's still open, is there anything you would do further? Monitor and wait for the duct to close is we've got the answer. Yeah, I think that's right. You, obviously, we're monitoring carefully all those things I talked about that we're monitoring when you've got your differential saturations. We're going to be monitoring those. We're going to be watching the femoral pulses and the lactates. And then you've got different situations. So if your duct doesn't close at all, we probably would go to a CT scan, maybe a catheter if we had high index of suspicion of uh, coarctation. If your duct closes, then, um, then you know, the, the well, two different outcomes, aren't there? What do you think the outcome was in this child? Did they have coarctation? Did they not have coarctation? Got no answer so far. I'm going to picture a, a, a highly likely coarx, I need to say. Uh, I'd go for a probably a hyperplastic arch in the end. Hannah, I think it was both, wasn't it? I think they had an extended repair. 
Yes, yeah, so they did. So they went on to develop a discrete quark, but they also did have a hyperplastic arch. So they did have an arch repair. And actually, when you look at this picture, you do just wonder if there's a little bit of turbulence in here that might be what's going to go on to develop the coarctation. Um, but what's really important, and I think Elspeth would be quite pleased I've mentioned this, the Z-scores are small here, but that doesn't tell you the whole picture because this duct could have closed and the arch could have looked slender, but the baby might have had good femoral pulses with good function and they might have been really well. And therefore, you're not going to operate on that child at that stage. You're going to monitor them in clinic. You'll see them fairly early in clinic. But all our babies that have an antenatal diagnosis of right heart dilatation and are born with right heart dilatation, we would follow up until at least a year because you can develop late coarctation. So you, you've still got to be mindful that it can develop over time. From a neonatal point of view, Fiona, we see quite a few babies, particularly early on, we've got underfilled left hearts and it all looks a bit small. I don't know whether other people would agree with that, but it can be quite, I think I find it quite difficult in the first couple of days when you've got a baby with a bit of query PPHN. I often worry about the left heart and the arch and keep a watch on it, but other people might might not have that problem. But No, I think you're probably right, um, Sam, but again, it goes to show it's not just about those absolute numbers, is it? Mm, it's about yeah. the clinical picture of the child and that does change. And you have to keep that in mind. So, so moving on to case study two. Um, so as you can see, I've um, got a nice shot of the abdominal aorta and a pulse wave Doppler. So is there anything that you would um, think? Well, think about these two images. So these were actually sort of the, apart from sight to shot, the first two images on a patient. So new, new baby or neonatal. Is there anything that sort of strikes you? I'm hoping people are ferociously tapping away at their keyboards. <laughs> uh, diastolic decay in the Doppler pattern, I must admit, I'm not sure I despite that. But yeah, diastolic tail, gradual decline in flow, everybody's on that one. Yeah, completely agree. So as you can see, it sort of lost its like pulsatility, the abdominal aorta. I completely agree. You've got the diastolic decay sort of tail, um, slightly lower velocity. Um, yeah, so completely agree with that. So obviously you do start to think, oh, there might be sort of a problem with the arch or left heart. Um, so this is the same patient. Um, so this is your, uh, you've gone to arch, you've took a lovely shot of the ascending and descending. Um, is there anything you can see from just that 2D image that you might worry about or you think it's okay? Interruption. Query. Yeah, query interruption. Yeah, you might start thinking you can see the ascending. You can also see two head and neck vessels and you can see the descending. Completely agree. So your next step, you're obviously thinking I'm going to put um, colour on to see if you can uh, assess the arch further. So once you've put your colour on, does this help your diagnosis at all? What do you think of the arch now? Looks a bit fishy around there. Yeah, <laughs> I completely agree. Yeah, around at the isthmus, there's definitely some flow turbulence. Um, do you think there's flow? Can you see any flow in the descending at all? Or are you still sort of querying interruption? Sunita's not seeing any flow. I don't think I am, but sometimes it's difficult to get the angle right for us uh, mortals. Yeah, com so I completely agree. It's sort of very, they can be sort of in different planes. So I would agree that it's really important to see if you can see the descending as well. So as you can that. see, at the flow, there's flow turbulence at the level of the isthmus, and there is actually a connection down to the descending. I think we wanted to show you here that don't be afraid to move around with your arch. You know, it's beautiful when you can get everything all in one shot, but sometimes you can't. And it is in different planes. Um, and you can see we've done three different shots for this child to prove that there's coarctation. You could miss it on, on any any of these views. Yeah, and I agree. Um, also, you get your classic Doppler profile um, for a coarctation as well. Um, so, yeah, 
one of the other things as well is from that sort of shot um sometimes it can be uh, making sure you are distinguishing between sort of rpa um sometimes if you have a bit of rpa stenosis you could be potentially picking up that quartation trace or thinking it's sort of rpa stenosis when it is actually a discrete quartation And we've well, talked about that recently, Sam, haven't we? The patient that has had both RPA stenosis and coartation, so it's not you, helpful. You, sound, you sounded like you didn't believe me on the phone, didn't you? Well, you know, but, but you, we you, knew you, we had you, to you, check you it. You were right. You did. <laughs> they were exactly the same velocity. I, I wasn't believing myself at all, but um, is that the Williams one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it, I find it quite tricky. It's, uh, have you got any tips on that? I mean, I, is it, I tend to alternate between pulse wave and continuous wave to try and get the the right spot is that the best thing to do or just getting your angles right uh, yeah it, it is very it is very difficult um i think color is obviously really important as well um i think you can see really nicely there that, um, that it is the arch um sometimes doppler like you said with continuous you are you could be picking up the highest velocity from anywhere um that's why i think it's really important to do color on doppler to show that it is it is the discrete quartation you're picking up. Keeping an open mind, I think, as well, Sam. Mm. And I think the abdominal aorta helps as well, um, as it fits with having a quartation. So case three, last one, guys. <laughs> yeah, sorry for all the questions. Um, so yeah, case three. Um, so from this parasternal long axis alone, what are your first thoughts? I gave a clue to this when I was talking. No answers yet. Somebody's stealing a car on the car park. Large LA and VSD, small LVO, LVOT. VSD. Yeah. yeah. So it's a particular type of VSD, isn't it? Makes you think of other things. We'll go on. So. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Fiona. I was just going to say, yeah, as you can see, sort of on the VSD, the infundibulum was very posterior directed as well. Um, that was just another key aspect of the sort of pathology we're looking at as well. Exactly. Um, so moving on, any thoughts on your supersternal? Oh, yeah. Sorry to disturb you. Just say posterior deviation highly likely to cause coarctation. Interruption. It's a typical interruption um, VSD. Thank you. So what do you think about this picture, everyone? What's this an image of? I've got a vote for interrupted aortic arch. OK. I think it applies is, to this picture. Apologies. Is that, if not. is that what we're seeing here? What's this? If it's an interruption, what's this? Everybody's gone quiet. Oh. I no, no one's the duck flies the descending iota. Where there is we the go. You see, no, no one's falling into our trap of <laughs> assuming that this is an aortic arch rather than a ductal arch. <laughs> I thought this this um, loop is quite nice as well. Um, so obviously everyone's thinking interruption. Um, so you can actually see sort of a head and neck vessel coming off at the top and also your subclavian uh, filling retrogradely as well, um, which makes you think interruption. So that's a ductal arch you're sharing there. Am I being silly? It was. Oh, yes, yes. That is yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. So this is this is your duct. This is an arch coming round, and it's one yeah. of the pitfalls you can have if you if you get onto your duct rather than being certain that you're on a true arch, you can think there's no coarctation. So it's just about being vigilant and making sure you, you're you're getting off duct and you're getting onto arch proper. Because that head and neck vessel is in a slightly different plane, is that right? Well, actually, on on that ductal arch, you've not got any head and neck vessels coming off it. Yeah, but it's just I think there was one creeping in, wasn't there? That, well, yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah, yeah. does that it's really join there? Does that join no, yeah, there? Yeah, and actually, the answer yeah. is no, but you could be mistaken. 
sometimes you want it to, don't you? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think this highlights what Fiona was saying that it your eye sometimes does join it all up. But as you can see from this image, that your head and neck vessel um doesn't join your descending. And here's another nice shot of it as well. So you can see sort of your duct um further obviously further down and your um second head and neck vessel doesn't actually join, it just goes ascending to head and neck vessel. So the very I'm still in the arch view to get this view of the head and neck vessels. Which yeah, uh, it's just okay. a yeah, super sternal. Nice ones. Yeah, thank you. Probably need no, to get absolutely. on to Elspeth who uh who's Yeah, just no, we've got we've room. got two more slides. So this was just She's looking impatient. Sorry. Oh, it's because of my technical failure, isn't it? So these are just to show you the different arches. So here's your normal arch. This one doesn't have coartation and hasn't developed it. This is a slender arch that might well manage without any intervention, but needs follow up. And this is a hyperplastic arch. And you can see in here, it really does nip down and you're going to be wanting to do something about this. Um, so key points, look for clues, things that might suggest that you're going to have an arch obstruction. Use Z scores and clinical signs together because uh, Z scores on their own don't mean enough. Make sure you're getting a true arch image rather than a ductal arch and let the duct close to prove you've got arch obstruction if you want them to have an operation. Final final slide, what's the diagnosis here? And then we're done. Crying baby. Crying baby. Screaming child. Sometimes you might not be able to make a diagnosis. <laughs> That's why you need sucrose in all your clinics. Indeed. Right, right thank you very guys. much. Sorry we went over.